Well, what's the deal with so many beekeepers that are quitting? I have been just amazed this year hearing so many people talk about they were going to keep bees, but then they went to a class or something. They started learning more about bees, and then they just decided, you know what? Beekeeping is not for me. It's amazing. Thought about sharing some of those uh, comments with you guys, but I really didn't have permission to do that. But a lot of people have written me saying they went to a beekeeping class and either a class or a company told them that you're going to wind up losing all your bees. This probably isn't for you. And so a lot of people are being kind of like scared out of beekeeping. And I'm concerned about that. Let's talk about that today. Hey, everybody, David Burns, good to be with you today. And I'm here to tell you that if you are a new beekeeper and you're starting in the spring, don't be scared away. Come on. A lot of people are going to tell you the, the kind of the bad and the ugly part of it, because for a lot of years, we didn't have I guess the courage <laughs> to tell people that beekeeping had its challenges. We just wanted everybody to get into beekeeping. And I think a lot of people entered into beekeeping kind of with a false idea that it's going to go great. You know, there's going to just be uh, bees won't sting you, that you'll have hundreds of gallons of honey, that you'll have just a wonderful sideline income and rosy all the way. And that's just not the way it is. But I would think most people uh, would understand that with any hobby that you enter into, there are going to be things about it that aren't going to turn out the way that maybe you would like. You know, there's challenges to everything that you do. And so I want to talk about that today. And what I want to do, stay with me, because I want to share with you three seasons of beekeeping, and maybe this will help you understand. This is going to be good for the experienced beekeeper, been doing it a long time, or it's going to be good for the brand new beekeeper starting out in the spring. Let's get into season one. What's the first season of beekeeping? The first season of beekeeping, look, it's simply you starting as a beekeeper, brand new, and you're simply getting your feet wet. That's the first season. This season, it can last for several years. It could last for several months. It kind of depends on your growth. But I'm going to say it's going to last more than one year. The first season of beekeeping is when you are just kind of wrapping your mind around the whole idea of bees of beekeeping. You're trying to learn terminology. You're trying to learn how to make the smoker run. <laughs> You're trying to figure out, you know, what's going on in your hive, how to identify things. It's a learning curve, but you're never going to fail during this first season as long as you are going out there and learning from your bees. Now, I like to say that your first season of beekeeping, you're actually doing things out of repetition. The best way to learn is to do something over and over again. So in this first season, not necessarily your first year, it might take you five years in this first season, but what you got to do is just boots on the ground. You've got to be out there in front of your hive. You got to open the lid up. I'm not saying to inspect it every day, but I'm saying that first year, you're going to spend time just inspecting, looking, taking notes. So don't think that you're going to understand beekeeping entirely the first year, the first two years. In fact, before you become a certified master beekeeper with the Eastern Apicultural Society, um, they require five years of experience. And so that's important to understand that this first season, you're just, it's okay. You don't have to know everything. We're gonna make mistakes on that first few years of beekeeping, no matter who you are. When I've had my first few years of beekeeping, uh, many disasters occurred <laughs> and I didn't do it right. I made mistakes. I was learning. I was like on a bicycle crashing into the curb. So when you're starting out, no matter how many classes you take, no matter, no matter how many uh, mentors that you have helping you or friends or whatever, you're going to hit the curb when it comes to beekeeping. It's okay. That's your first year. Expect to have some flaws, some failures, just sometimes when you're thinking, oh, this is hard, this is challenging. <laughs> you know, you read books, you take a class, and you think, I got it, I know this, I know beekeeping. And then all at once you get your bees and you start inspecting them after a few weeks and you go, what are they doing? I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what that is. What is that bug? Why are they doing this? Why aren't they doing that? They're not following the book. Well, bees don't read the same books we do, I guess. I don't know. But season one is you growing and learning. You can never fail at that. Any, anytime you take a step forward and you're learning something about your bees, you're making progress. And it's all about you anyway. Stop comparing yourself to other people, other beekeepers that have had more years of experience or they have more staff or team members that work on their yards with them. You know, just be okay with you learning. That's season one. Let's talk about season, oh, let me say, season one has a lot of rough spots to it. That's right. 
Season one is when, now it could be more than one year. I'm not, I don't mean, I mean a season, by a season, I don't mean spring, winter, summer, fall. I mean a season being a period of time, whatever that is for you. Okay, that's what I mean by season. So this first season of beekeeping, when you're growing and learning, it has its rough moments. Those rough moments usually happen because a lot of new beginners, um, they, they're optimistic that they're not gonna have any problems, so they don't learn about their problems. They haven't seen problems like pests and diseases. And so when beekeepers face a lot of uh, struggles with like say Varroa destructor or small hive beetle, they haven't seen those maybe in their class, they just weren't equipped with a lot of knowledge on how to deal with mites or beetles. And so when they get them um, and they do nothing about these uh, pests, then they take their toll on the hive. And that's why a lot of beekeepers lose their bees in the winter time. And as a result of the winter loss, that's why a lot of beekeepers quit in their first year of beekeeping. That first season is very shaky because the beekeeper is learning and there can be discouragement, there can be a lot of depression because it's not turning out like the beautiful pictures in the book portray it to be. <laughs> it's not as beautiful as everybody told me. People on YouTube are doing it better than me. I'm so depressed. I'm such an idiot. I can't do this. I can't, I, I have so much anxiety trying to figure beekeeping out. I don't like it anymore. Look, don't take the attitude that you have to figure it all out and be as good as everybody else you're watching or reading. Just remember, you've got to plug in somewhere. Season one is for you to make a mess. I'm sorry to say, I mean, you know, when you're, to be an artist, for example, you give a little one-year-old a paintbrush and some paint, they're gonna make a mess. I mean, it's gonna be paint everywhere. Let's, let's be honest. But give the one-year-old years and years to experience controlling the brush and growing and getting motor skills and all that before long you got a Van Gogh or something, right? Same with beekeeping. All right, let's get into season two. Season two is when, remember it's not, not a season, it's winter or summer or fall or anything like that. And I'm not really talking about a period of time. It's not, I'm not talking about your second year. I'm saying that there's a first season that you go through where you are just experiencing bees wrapping your head around the concept of beekeeping. But there's another season that comes about is when you get enough ground, uh, grounding or fundamental knowledge that now beekeeping is not so scary or depressing or challenging for you. You have put some experience under your belt and in your head, you kind of know what you're looking at. Things are starting to make sense, not entirely, but in your second season, they're starting to make sense now. Oh, I know what to do. Um, last year this happened, I did that at work, I'm gonna do it again. So you gain experience, you gain knowledge, you gain skill sets that are developing. So the second season is when you start embracing bees in a different way. Instead of looking at them and internally in your mind trying to say, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I need to ask David, I don't know what to do. You know, that's the first season. The second season you're like, okay, I'm a little more confident, I kinda know this, oh, I know that, I know what to do here. So you're gaining all this bee biology and you take another step further. That's what I love about season two is that this is when the beekeeper says, you know what, I'm gonna grab some of these books off the shelf back here now that it's cold in winter maybe, and I'm gonna dig in there and learn about nurse bees, bees of winter physiology. How long does the queen live again? I'm gonna look that up in the books. And what do I feed my bees? I'm gonna look that up in science. I'm gonna start studying uh, things about bees that are well documented. And so you start plugging away a lot of good knowledge and your skill set to come alongside of your actual practical experience in the hive. So when you're in a hive now, you're not guessing anymore. You have more science, you have more experience and education and skills. This is your second season. Unfortunately, a lot of beekeepers don't make it out of season one, out of discouragement. So let me back up to season one. This, this is the important word I wanna leave with you about season one. Season one, your job, enjoy your bees, learn about bees by watching them and being in there repetitively, do inspections often, and then stay positive. Be happy, people. Season one is about being happy, all right? Don't get discouraged. Take a deep breath when things don't work out. Tell yourself, well, well I'm in season one. David said, be happy, I'm happy. I'm a little scared, but I'm happy. <laughs> but season two, you know, you don't have to keep telling yourself to be positive because you've gotten over that critical time when a lot of beekeepers quit in season one and you're in season two. And now you're wanting to dig deeper. You're just wanting to explore bees more 
And so this is a time when you really begin to study and learn more about bees, and this can be your lifetime. Season two, there's three seasons I'm referring to, but season two may be as far as you ever go, because all you ever want to do is just learn about bees, grow, and enjoy your bees. Season three is really taking a big step. Now, a lot of people get into season three, and they really shouldn't. And let me explain. Season three is when you love bees so much and you've gotten past year one, you didn't quit, you were happy and positive, got into season two and you dug deeper, you got into the biology and the science behind bees and maybe you added a few more hives, caught a few swarms, all that stuff. Season three is when you're like, I can't do anything but think about bees. I want to quit my day job. I want to have a million colonies. I want to raise queens. I want to sell packages. I want to sell nukes. I want to start my own bee business. I want to manufacture my own woodenware. I want to do everything bee related all day from sunup to sundown. I want to have semi trucks. I want to have fork trucks. I want to scoop up beehives, put them on semi trucks, pollinate almonds in California. I'm just wanting to do everything bee related. That, that's season three. <laughs> and a lot of people do get into season three and they should because they are really good at all of those things I just mentioned. I got into season three. Still in season three. Oh, that's another part of season three. You may say, I want to be a mentor. I want to help other people. Or season three might be the time when you become a certified master beekeeper because you want to start teaching classes. You want to have a YouTube video or something like that. Not that you have to be certified to do all those things, but it helps a little bit. But it helps you grow and know uh, how to teach and how to help others. So season three might be when you step your game up in beekeeping beyond um, season two, where you're just simply enjoying your bees. You don't have to make a living off of them. You don't have to teach others. You're just enjoying a couple of colonies in your backyard. So th season three is when you really jump through, uh, you take a big leap. Now, why isn't um, season three for everybody? Season three looks cool from season two. Season two, you've learned a lot about bees and you're having a good you know, time with bees and you're having success. And so you think, okay, I need to take this next big leap. If I can have a little bit of success with a, a small number of colonies, I can take a big leap. I can get a whole bunch of colonies and I can have a whole bunch more success. It's like the story of, I heard once that some guys got a pickup truck and they drove south, let's say down to Mississippi. And they were gonna buy watermelons in Mississippi, load up the back of their pickup truck full of watermelons, drive them back up to the north and uh, make a little profit off each watermelon. And so they drove down there, picked up their watermelon and drove back up to the north to sell watermelons before you can grow them here. But after they counted all their expenses, food and gas money for the pickup truck and all, they didn't make any money. But one of them came up with a brilliant idea. He said, I've solved our problem. We just need a bigger truck. <laughs> well, in case, uh, in case you don't get it, a bigger truck's going to use more gas, and they're not making any profit off a of watermelon. No matter how many you bring up and how many big trucks you run, you're not going to make any more profit. There's a problem somewhere else. So just because you're having a tiny little bit of success here, if you multiply it out big time, you're still going to just make the same tiny little bit of profit. <laughs> so you have to be careful when you jump to uh, stage three, season three, that you don't really, uh, you may not account for all the headaches that come in a larger B business, a larger commercial operation, sideliner. You may be trying to work your day job and take care of 150 colonies at night when you get off work. Family suffers, you suffer, your health suffers, back goes out. So be sure before you jump into season three and go all in beekeeping crazy, that you have really counted the cost of what it's gonna to take to drive that pickup truck full of watermelons back up north. <laughs> I love that illustration. I really think it's great. It hits home, doesn't it? So those are the three seasons. Now, why are, why are people quitting beekeeping? Why are, what's going on with that anyway? Recently, I've spoken a lot of places. I've given a lot of talks already this year. And in every place I go, I'm hearing this about beekeepers that are quitting. Some are quitting. In one place I was at, they said, we are giving beginner classes and introducing people to beekeeping, telling them how to keep bees, people are quitting before they're starting. That means that after they take the class, they decide not to keep bees. Now, what do I think about that? I'll be honest with you. I, I think that the presentation needed to be different. I really do. If we're giving out difficult stuff, if we're making, the, if we're making beekeeping look bad 
and look hard and look challenging and tell people that you're gonna lose half your hives and tell people that mites are, are just too much of a challenge. You're really gonna, you know, if we give all the bad news and paint a bad picture, then people aren't gonna to wanna to do it. And wait a minute, hear me out here. This is, this is therapeutic. I'm having fun sharing this with you. I wanna talk more about it. If I go to a restaurant and I order, let's say a steak and, you know, potato and broccoli and all that, and they bring it out to me, it looks really good. I slice it, it oh, it tastes perfect, it's cooked perfectly. I like my steaks medium rare, and it was, and let's say it's cooked perfectly. The mashed potato, or the baked potato is really hot. That's a pet peeve of mine, I don't like a cold baked potato. Leave a comment if you don't like a cold baked potato, <laughs> like you want a hot potato like me. I like broccoli, and so now it all tastes good, it looks good, but if I were to walk back into the kitchen and watch it being prepared, Hmm. Ooh, yeah, I might see some things like, ooh, did you just, did you just do that to my steak? Or, ooh, has, is that how you handle the food back here? You know what I mean? My wife one time uh, with um, a business she was running had to take, uh, somebody on the property had to have a food sanitation certificate or whatever that's called. And she took that course, you know, and uh, we weren't, at my, my wife, Sherry, wouldn't let us go out to eat for like uh, six months <laughs> after that. She's like, nope, we're never going out to eat again. And uh, my point is, in a beekeeping class, you want to show people a nice plate of beekeeping. You want to show them the nice things. But listen, you cannot avoid, you should not avoid saying the necessary things that you need to say. But there's a way to say it without scaring them off. And that's an art. That's a skill. And I think some people are really good at that. Some people aren't so good with it. So on my channel here, I'm gonna just level with you. Beekeeping, I've done it, I started beekeeping almost 30 years ago. Half my lifetime. I love it. I love it, people. And have I had miserable, miserable days and weeks or months? Absolutely, I've shared those with you, things that have happened. I can laugh about them now, they're kind of funny. But at the time, they hurt, they were painful, I cried, I just got depressed or whatever. I lost hives, you know, okay, that happens. And so I think beekeeping is a hoot. And I think it could be enjoyable for you if you go into it with the right attitude and perspective. And that's why I gave you these three seasons. So you could see the progress that it takes to go through these three seasons. Now, I wanna be honest with you and say, what about you know all the bad things that can happen to beekeeping? Hey, when Sherry and I wanted to have a family and have children, we could have sat around and said, you know all the bad things that can happen to us if we have children? Oh my, oh wow. And they tell you, you know, having a child is gonna cost you a million dollars or more before they're 18 or something. I'm sure that's gone up. And we could have said, we don't have that kind of money. We can't have children. Somehow we had children and it worked out. We glad we did, we, had six, we have six children. So I think with anything like this, um, don't consider it to be all negative and bad. When you're in a beginner's class and the presenter is telling you about small hay beetle and they're telling you about uh, the viral destructor mite and how you need to uh, treat for mites and handle beetles and prevent swarming and prevent robbing and Asian murder hornets and yellow-legged hornets and triple laylaps and all these things that could affect our bees in the future and everything, that's okay. We could all be hit by a meteorite and my house could be flattened. I, could, I live in the, the tornado alley. I could get hit by a tornado and blow my house away. We just finally got our house repaired from the last storm that tore it up. When was that? Last summer. And so I don't want another storm to tear my house up, but I'm still living in the house. I'm not gonna move underground in a shelter and fear that something could happen that's bad. And that's the same with life too. You can't hide in your house, can't hide under your bed, you can't, Stop living in fear of dying. And you can't stop, you shouldn't stop enjoying life because you're afraid that while you're enjoying it, something bad's gonna happen. That's not the really the best approach. I'm not telling you to go out and be, you know, stupid and make, you know, make bad decisions and all. But to really enjoy life, sometimes we have to live on the edge, we have to take a little risk. Beekeeping is a risk, you know? A lot, of, a lot about beekeeping is a little bit of a risk. I remember when I started my bee business a long time ago, I told my brother about it, and uh, his response to me was, you have a lot of courage to start a business with things that can die. <laughs> you know, bees can die. I make my living off living things that I gotta keep alive, and that's kind of challenging. <laughs> and uh, it's worked out for me. 
And finally, let me leave you with this. I want to leave you with some encouraging words, and that is one, some things that I say quite often, I find the greatest fulfillment in beekeeping because it helps me to help you. I feel that my greatest satisfaction in life is serving other people. That is powerful. When you can love other people and you can serve other people um, and encourage other people, that's, that's living the dream right there. It's not about money. It's not about ego or success or fame or fortune. Life is all about helping others, uh, serving others, loving others, encouraging others. And making these videos allows me to do that. You've seen that. You've observed it with each, each video that I make. Because let's face it, we're friends. I got your back. I'm here for you. I've, I go out of my way to make videos, mainly so that I can sit down with you and we can have a little chat. And that's why I have a mentorship program. It's called B Team 6. I come alongside of you through my mentorship program. I've had it for, I don't know, eight to 10 years now. I've helped mentor beekeepers all around the world for that amount of time, almost a decade now. And uh, many of you have been a part of B Team 6. Thank you so much. If you're unaware of what this is, it's a, it's a way for me to personally mentor you. And I think you ought to look at this program. I'll leave a link right here. It has a history of success behind it. I can only take so many, so don't delay too long. But I think we tweaked it this year. Last year, we had to cut it off all year long because it got filled to capacity. But we've tweaked it. I think we can take a lot more uh, mentors this year. So take a look at it. It might be just what you need to get started and do a really good job, not get depressed and defeated in your first year of beekeeping. So all of us have bees to be thankful that we are being brought together to a higher cause, not just honey, not just pollination, but be bees bring us together as people. You're watching my video and you're being encouraged by me because of bees. And that's great. I love doing that. Now, another thing, if you're really worried about bees in the spring, like you were grateful enough and thankful enough, blessed enough to have bees survive the winter, your bees have mites coming out of winter. They've been raising brood. Well, how do you deal with mites? You're going to have to make a split. Well, what if you're getting a new package? How long do you wait to, to treat for mites in that package? Well, got a video answering all these questions for you. Here it is right here. How to handle mites in the spring. I'd love for you guys to follow me over here. I'll see you over there.